There we go. Trust people, March 26th and April 30th. Meet at church by 8 a.m. We need volunteers to help, and the funds will go to a camp and outreach. Go. Happy Lifestyle Support Group, April 1st, 6 p.m. <laughs> outreach, need your help. Hot dogs, water, eggs, prizes, kids, candy, see sign up, share the connections. Point. <laughs> April 16th, we're going to have an outreach event to hand out eggs and more details to come save the date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Youth camp, a pastor road if you're wanting to work, camp, or if your kids are wanting to attend. It'll be in July, and the weeks are high school, middle school, and elementary week.
and that he's carried me through some things. And I was thinking this morning, I told you that I've been in church my entire life. Mama took me there when I was a week old. But I didn't tell you this part. And there were many times when the enemy thought he had me down. There were many times when the enemy sent someone in front of me to say, you can't make it. When there were people that came and said, you're not smart enough. That's why I'm working on my degree now. It's not needed for the church. It's needed for me. Because somebody said, you aren't smart enough. You're not good enough. You're not good looking enough. You didn't come from the right family. You didn't come from the right side of the tracks. But can I tell you this morning, there is absolutely nothing that we can't accomplish and when we put God in the middle of it. So I thank God this morning that he picked me up. He turned me around. He put my feet on solid ground so that I could walk forward.
kids when they're on the kids' church. Sing that just a little bit more, guys. Don't run away. While they're going to kids' church, get the adults ready. Did you know that one was 31 years old? My pastor. <laughs> it was a Ron Cannoli song from 1991. Those of you that were Cannoli fans back in the 90s, I had a cassette tape of him. <laughs> Played it in my car. <laughs> when I was an older teenager. Amen. I wasn't out of high school yet in 1991. <laughs> Made me feel good. <laughs> Praise the Lord for all that He's doing, all that He's done, and all that He's going to do. Amen. I want to say thank you for all that you did for me last Sunday, last week. Uh, not just on Sunday. Some of you did things the days before and, and the days after, and I appreciate that. And you made me feel special. Getting old is no fun, they tell me. So I don't intend to, even though I may act like it sometimes. <laughs> we want to give our tithes and offerings this morning to the Lord. Come on, guys, let's be ready to receive. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you, Lord, for every victory that you've shared in our lives. So, Father, we pray that you would bless this giving today. In Jesus' name. Amen.
I was sitting in my office yesterday when they were learning that song. And I'll tell you what happens in their praise team practices is if they get one nailed real good, it comes out on Sunday morning, they change plans. They were bebopping in here yesterday to that one while I was back there spending the day with William Seymour. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I'm working on my degree. I, I, am, I am working to finish a PhD in church history. It's not because the church needs me to have that, but because it's a personal goal of mine. Amen. I was told as a young man that I wasn't smart enough to have an education. And I was told that it didn't matter if I ever had an education and as long as I made it through high school, I had reached the education level of my father, and that was good enough. But during my first year of college, my dad came and saw me in my workplace. I was working in a hospital lab at the time as a phlebotomist wearing a long white coat. And when he walked in, he was shocked, and he told me later that he was shocked and so proud because he saw me in a professional role. Uh, that he had never been able to accomplish. So he said, you've already accomplished more than I ever have. <sighs> and I promised him when I graduated from Western Kentucky University that I would keep going and continue accomplishing more. Amen. And it took me a while. It's taken me a while to get there. Right. It took me too. <laughs> I called my mother when I finished my last class of my bachelor degree at Western Kentucky University. I called her and I said, Mama, your baby boy has finished his bachelor degree. She said, I knew you could do it. You're, you can do anything you set your mind to. I said, it only took me 15 years to do a four-year degree. <laughs> but a lot of life happened in that 15 years, right? A lot of things stopped me along the way, but I kept going. We keep going because there's something inside of us that keeps pushing us forward. Amen. So I want to share with you this morning, and I'm going to be calling on some of you to help me. So this is going to be an interactive day, okay? okay. I've, only, I've only prepped a couple people for that, so the rest of you will be surprised, and I probably will be too. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I want to talk to you today about seven words to victory. Seven words to victory. I want you to go to Revelation with me, chapter 12. Some of you are going to think, what in the world is he doing? Seven words to victory. We're going to Revelation. That sounds like a good one, doesn't it? Uh, chapter 12, verse number 7 is where we'll start. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against and his, and the, the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. <clears throat> Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he has known, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. I want you to go back and focus with me just for a second on 10 and 11. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Stop right there. Father, we thank you this morning for the worship today. We thank you for the beauty of this congregation. We thank you for all of those that would join us online. Father, we praise you, Lord, for all of the strength that you give and all of the wonderful things that you've done 
in our lives. So, Father, we ask that you would add your blessing to your word today and that you would anoint us to hear, receive, and to share what, God, you have given to us today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. <laughs> seven words to victory. Here they are. Give me the seven words there, Jalen. You had it right. There we go. You cannot overcome unless you have endured. Go ahead. Seven words to victory. Right there it is. Yeah. You cannot overcome unless you have endured. Can I tell you that just because you see a battle doesn't mean that you will have victory over that battle. Come on. Just because you have seen warfare doesn't mean that you have fought the war. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Just because you have read the testimony doesn't mean that you have the testimony. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. That's good. I spent the day yesterday with my nose in books reading about William Seymour, who is considered an uneducated, mainly uneducated uh, African American minister in the early 1900s, late. 1800s who developed his way across the country and ended up in Los Angeles uh, in a place of being padlocked out of a church <laughs> because they didn't like the way he preached. So the, the pastor, a female pastor, padlocked the church to keep him from coming back for the next service that he was supposed to preach. He ended up at the home of some friends. Uh, you didn't know you were getting my history lesson, but I'm going to share about William Seymour for just a minute, and then we'll move on. Uh, he ended up at the home of some friends. They began praying day and night, having dinner together. And one night, while having dinner, the man of the house fell out of his chair onto the floor, speaking in tongues. Come on. Amen. William Seymour had not experienced that yet at that point. But it sparked a prayer meeting revival in those people's home that lasted 24 hours a day. And on the third day, the crowd was gathered outside the house on the front porch to the point that the front porch of the house collapsed. Wow. And William Seymour received the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Amen. About two days later, they ended up having their first service in an old Methodist church that became a stable and a warehouse on Azusa Street. Come on. The Azusa Street Revival broke out in an old warehouse building with, uh, with, with, with hand-hewn uh, 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 boards as their benches and a pulpit made out of wooden shoeboxes. Not out of the fancy niceties that we see today, but out of the necessity of someone saying, I don't have anything, God, but you. Amen. Can I tell you this morning that there are many times in our lives where we're facing battles and need of victory in our life, but there are no tools other than God. There is no victory other than what God can give you. Yeah. Now the tools that we have are those things that God has provided. Right. They do not rest in our abilities. They do not rest in our voices and our vocal abilities to sing well and to be pretty. They don't rest in our bank accounts or in our vehicles or homes. They don't rest in the job that you may have and the money you may earn. But they rest in those things that God has given us. The love of His salvation that is shed into our heart through Christ. The ability to have joy when all of the world is falling, around, uh, uh, falling apart around us. The ability to have peace that passes all human understanding. The ability to understand that this life does, didn't give me anything. As the old Pentecostal church would have sung, this world didn't give it to me and, 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 and the world can't take it away. This joy that I have, this peace that I have, this, this love that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Can I tell you something this morning? The ability to overcome in this life comes when you and I understand that it's not about us getting to a point of battle and sitting down or declaring defeat, but rather enduring through the process to know that I may get weary sometimes. The Bible teaches us not to get weary in well-doing, but sometimes the battle 
gets hard and sometimes the battle is rough and sometimes we get physically, mentally and emotionally tired but can I tell you that there is something inside the heart of the believer that is so deep rooted inside of us that we're not able to sit down for very long and hang our hearts on the willow branches and give up on God because something deep inside of us says keep on moving, yeah, yeah. keep on going, keep taking one step in front of the other to know that God has got our steps ordered. Okay. Yeah. That's right. <sighs> In our text this morning, we see the battle that took place in heaven that ended on earth when Satan was cast out of heaven. He got to a place where the, the Lord wouldn't put up with him anymore. God said, you're done, you're out, go find a new home. Uh, and he found a new place to live on the earth. Uh, and, and the Bible tells us there, woe to those of us who live on the earth because now we have to battle with the old buzzard, right? Come on. Uh, Seven powerful words. Now let me let me let me rephrase it and maybe say it this way. You will overcome that which you are enduring. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. You will can I come down there for Go a minute? You, you will overcome that which you are enduring. Uh-huh. So some people will say, well, I, I just don't know about overcoming these things in life. It, it just seems like that every moment that, a, that, 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 that something good happens, something else comes behind it. Can I tell you uh, that every time, and it should not be a surprise to us, Brother Greg, right. but every time that the enemy, uh, that God blesses us with something, the enemy is right behind it with something to bring you down. Yeah. Right? Right? On Sunday last week, you blessed me. I was absolutely thrilled. I was exhausted when I went home, but I, I was thrilled with the day. There were so many of you here, so many friends, so many guests, so many people to entertain, so many people to pat on the back and hug, and all those things we haven't done much of the last two years, and I had an absolute wonderful day. But can I tell you, Monday, whew, <laughs> By Tuesday, I was quoting the, the, the funny that Melissa shared on my Facebook, uh, uh, Foghorn Leghorn, yeah. saying, you, boy, you are about to exceed the limitations of my medication. <laughs> <laughs> By Tuesday, I thought, good Lord, what have I got myself into this week, right? That's what happens when God blesses us. The enemy wants us to be defeated. So when your blessing comes, the, the, the enemy is right there behind it to deflate you and try to bring you back down Reach to a place down. where he can walk on you. Reach and I tell you, that here's the thing that the enemy is too, sorry for saying it this way, but too stupid to understand. Uh -huh. Even though he thinks he may get us down, the child of God has steps that are ordered by the Lord uh -huh. so that we can This church I grew up in, they used to sing a song that said, Keep on walking. You gotta keep on walking. Walking in the light of the Lord. See, some of you are that old too. <laughs> Something is missing in the church today that the old timers had. Come on. It is the tenacity. Go ahead, preach. <laughs> Preach. And get myself in trouble before I get preach. out of here. You know, she, she's going to preach tonight, so I can go hide in the office for a while. <laughs> if you get me up, turn me out on this one. Uh, we, we are missing the tenacity uh -huh. to keep on going. That's right. Preach. It's truth. Come on, brother. Preach it. And I'll take it one step farther and say that over the last two years, the enemy has exposed us. Uh huh. Preach. Yes, sir. Amen. The enemy has exposed the church for who we really are. That's it, right there. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Help us, Jesus. I've shared with some of you, I've spoken with pastors who said they're disheartened by people that have quit going to church because of the COVID virus, and they have they're people that they never thought would give up mm -hmm. on the church. Not only have they given up on the church, they have given up on God. 
Help us, Jesus. turned completely from him. Help us, Jesus. Because we've been in a season where the government said, you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh-huh. Preach, Pastor. Preach. <sighs> Help him, Jesus. We have done our share. We've done what we were supposed to do. Even as recent as January, when we had a little COVID outbreak in here, my house was quarantined for 10 days. We separated, put seats, signs back on the seats, spread yourselves back out when we come together. Don't shake hands, don't hug, don't do all that stuff. But can I tell you, that's not a way of life. That's right. No. That is a temporary fix to a temporary problem. Go ahead. Amen. Oh, don't get me Go ahead. Right there. Preach right there. Go ahead. Many times where you and I sit in the point of giving up is in the lack of understanding that the problem is only temporary. Yeah. And if we will endure through that season. Come on. Come on. Uh, is it like this last week the temperatures came up just a little bit? I started to see things coming out of the ground and, and daffodils are blooming and all of those wonderful things of spring. You know that spring is my favorite season because the colors are bright enough for a colorblind person to see. I can't see fall colors when you all are bragging on how pretty, pretty it is. It's just brown and dead to me. But spring, I can see the bright colors. Daffodils are one of my favorites and the red tulips were my grandpa's favorite. I love those color combinations because they're bright and they're cheery. And I was sitting in my office at work and we've not turned the air conditioning on yet. So it was warm the other afternoon in my office with the sun coming through the windows. And people had said it's such a beautiful day outside. And I said, I don't know, I've been inside, but I'm looking through the window at it. Can I tell you, sometimes we get into a place where we fail to understand the season that we're in. Mm. On that afternoon as I was looking out and I was seeing people out and about and enjoying the weather and people were uh, uh, just doing their thing outside. I came to realize without even comprehending up until that moment, the winter is coming to an end. Come on. Hadn't even thought about it. You know, the calendar doesn't say that it's spring quite yet. We'll get there in the next couple of days, but it's tomorrow, Tuesday. Today. Is it today? Yes. Is it today? Yeah. <laughs> I don't look at my calendar either. <laughs> Good timing, Pastor. <laughs> to, to understand and know. Uh huh. Seasons change. Right. Yeah. And if you can survive and endure through the hard season of death and darkness, uh-huh. Uh-huh. come on, come on. Spring comes right around the corner. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Life comes right around the corner. That's why David said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He wasn't talking about a funeral which is where we use that verse of Scripture. But if we understand what he's talking about, he's talking about the hardest moments in life. Yeah. If I can endure through those hardest moments in life, right? I don't have to fear any evil, for God is with me. Yeah. Come on. In every moment of my life, he's there. Yeah. In the dark moments when it seems like the enemy might get the better of me, he's there. Right. In those moments when I feel like I may not make it another uh-huh. step, He's there. And can I tell you this morning, church, let me get back up here and share a verse and then I'm coming back down. Uh, we, I'm having fun today. Uh, we, 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 we tend to get to a place where we don't understand. Romans 12, 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Right. Can I tell you that if you and I understand this world doesn't need another evil deed to make Come up on, for the on. evil deeds that are taking place. Yeah. What this world needs today yeah. is a good shot of the goodness of Jesus alive and well in yeah. this earth that will change this situation. Come on. Uh, Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. First John 5 and 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Mm-hmm. Even our faith. Mm-hmm. 
Can I tell you, we serve a faithful God. Yes, yeah. amen. And He is faithful to us in the long time. Yeah. Right. Not in the short time. Right. Right? Amen. In the perseverance. Yeah. He's good to us. Yeah. And it lasts longer than a short season. Amen. It's goodness that will sustain us. Sister Sims, will you share? In the fall of 1946, at the age of two years old, I got out of bed and could not stand up anymore, could not walk. My family thought my legs were asleep, but they weren't. My mother took me to the doctor and I had infantile paralysis or what we know as polio. So I was taken over a hundred miles away to a hospital and left with my mother crying and not wanting to leave her baby. But I stayed there for several weeks, maybe even a few months. But God has been good to me. And when I finally got to go home, the doctors told my mother and dad that I wouldn't be able to walk anymore, that I still couldn't walk. But they took me home and because of the prayers of a praying mother. God heard her prayers. And with the help of my older brothers and sisters, they taught me to walk again. I had to go to clinics with my mom and all of that kind of stuff. But God healed and strengthened yes. me. Amen. And, you know, the results of the polio were still there. But I wasn't in an iron lung or I wasn't, you know, I had to wear braces for a while. But my mother took me up to the front one night at church and had them pray over me. They took those braces off of me and I never had to wear them again. Jesus. So God has seen me through over 75 years of this. Thank you, Jesus. And he has helped me to accomplish more than I ever thought Thank I could Jesus. in my life. Thank you, Jesus. And she's still walking. Yes, amen. What the doctor said couldn't happen, she's still doing today. Come on. Come on. Tell me that's not a testimony. Yeah. That's a testimony of overcoming the obstacles of this life, trusting in God. She gave testimony to her mother and her mother's faith, her brothers and sisters and their faith, their trust in her that she could... Good grief. Do you understand what just happened there? Come on. You just heard a whole bundle of testimonies all in one. Uh -huh. yeah. Because of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And she still walked. And she said, I'm not walking as fast as I used to. <laughs> and that tends to happen to us. None of us move as fast as we used to. Right? But God is good to us to continue our movement yeah. forward. Can I do one more? Can I do one more before I go back to more scripture? Yeah. Yeah. Carmen, will you share? Because the enemy didn't want you to live. He didn't want you to make it to be adulthood. <laughs> I'm victorious. Yes. Uh, right. Sixty-eight years ago, when I was six years old, on Easter Sunday. I was standing on the sidewalk and I wanted to go to the playground. And a uh, drunk driver hit me and just drove away and left me laying. And I walked away from that with just a broken shoulder. Then just a few months later, the day after my seventh birthday, I ran out in front of a car. It hit me, threw me 250 feet and shattered my skull. They didn't think I was going to live, but God had other plans. I, I came out three months later out of the hospital. A week to the day that I got out of the hospital, guess what? I ran out in front of a car. I guess I like playing out in the street. I don't know. I walked away from that. Not an injury. Nothing. A few years later, I got hit again. This one was the lady's fault. I was crossing at a school crossing 
and her foot slipped off the brake, and uh, I became her hood ornament. But I uh, just had a few scrapes and bruises. And then years later, I endured the loss of two children, a son and a daughter. Then Lyme disease almost took me. Yes. Then a brain tumor tried to take me. But God always had other plans. He said, no, your time is not now. It is later. I have things for you to do. And then just last year, COVID tried to take me. I spent quite a bit of time in the hospital, but mm -mm. God said, no, not yet. And now I'm almost 72 and still kicking and still doing God's work and being blessed each and every day. Yeah. Amen. And gave testimony this morning to the praise team that what the doctors thought was going on was not going on. Amen. 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 Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 36 through 39 says, For ye have need of patience. <clears throat> that thing nobody wants to pray for. Right? Uh -huh. You have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he shall come, he shall, he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, we are not those people that give up. Right. We are not the ones that turn around and retreat. Right. We're the ones that continue pushing forward until we are truly saved from this life. Amen. Amen. And all along the way, as we continue to push forward, God continues to bless His people. Amen. He takes care of us. He wants good things for us. It amazes me that Jeremiah 29, 11, I thought for years was just a great verse of Scripture because God has good thoughts about me and I love it. That's a great one. It gives you warm and fuzzies until I read the verses before it when it said God, God told them, I'm going to send you into captivity. Yeah. Come yeah. on. I'm sending you into a place of bondage. But don't forget what I think about you. Right. <laughs> I have good thoughts towards you. That even in the times. Yeah, even in the times when God is putting us through something. We don't have the right to give up on God. Come on. <sighs> Preach. Even in the moments when we're looking at God and saying, where are you at? We don't have a reason to turn around and give up on Him. Mm -hmm. Because it might just be that He's trying to teach us some lessons. Maybe we need to learn to be more patient. Uh, maybe we need some long suffering. <laughs> maybe we need to understand that our faith is stable even in a world and in a life that is unstable. You see, I've come, I've lived long enough now to understand that the only stability I have in life is my relationship with God. Yeah. And the only time that it gets unstable is because of me. Right. Yeah. Not because of him. Right. Because he never fails. It's encouraging to us that he spoke to Peter and he said, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. When we look at a rock, we understand that it is something that is often unmovable. It is something that is sturdy and strong. I remember growing up in the creek down behind our house. There was an overhang uh, over the creek, and that was a good place uh, to get a good cool drink of water that was spread, had come from a spring, and it was trickling down through there. But there was this one place that about that high, up over on the high side of the bank, uh, there was a rock that stuck out about you know, all the way over the, 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 the creek there. And I could stand on top of that rock. I never was concerned about it moving. Because its roots went deeper than what I could see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Amen. 
You see, when you and I have rooted ourselves in the Word of God, there are roots that are deeper than what mankind can see, and the enemy cannot understand how deep your roots are. He can't pluck you up by the roots like you do a plant or a weed. He can't pluck it up and see just what kind of system you've got underneath you because that dirt is immovable. And you cannot be shaken. You cannot be plucked out. You cannot be removed unless you are the one doing the removing. Uh -huh. yeah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy has no place to tell you you can't succeed and that God won't provide for you. Yeah. J.L., you ready? So eight years ago, uh, February, I was given the opportunity uh, to work for a company um, and when I got there, I heard the Lord say, learn everything that you can. Um, I didn't know where it was going to take me, but he said, learn, pay attention, uh, do everything that you can do while you're here. Um, so I worked for that company, and there were nights and days and weekends, months upon months, uh, going in overnight, um, missing church, um, just doing everything that I could. Um, I felt like they, they knew that I was there for a reason, so they worked me and worked me and worked me. Um, and so... Last July, God said that it was time to go. And I questioned God. I said, God, I've been here for seven years and I've learned all this stuff and now you want me to leave and have to start over. He said, if you trust me, you'll just do what I asked you to do. And so I left there um, and I started my, started my business and for a month I was just praying. I said, God, I'm going to trust you. Whatever you have for me to do, that's exactly what I'm going to do. About a month after that, I got hired by another company where I first started out. Um, and I was there for about six months and a position came open. And I said, God, I've only been here for a little while, so there's, there's no way that I'm going to get, get this position. And how God works, there was two people that were ahead of me that had been there before I was there. And I said, God, I'm just going to apply whatever, whatever your will um, for my life be. That's, that's what I'm going to go with. And I said, I told co-pastor, uh, whatever, it, whatever it is, I'm okay with it. Whatever he says for me, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna be okay with it. Whatever the answer is, whatever the results are, I trust God either way. Right. And so I applied for it and my boss's boss said, I want you to have this position. Um, I know you haven't been here very long, but I know your history. I know what you've done, where you've been, and I know your, what you've gone through. I know what you've done at your other company, and I want you to have this position, but you gotta go through and apply like just like everybody else. Right. And these people that I had to interview with didn't know anything about me. They knew my name, but that's about it. And I interviewed with them, and about a week later, um, I got a phone call offering me a director's position um, at this company. Um, and I just thank God, and I thank him for his faithfulness. And I thank him because he didn't have to allow things to be so. But I trust him, and I trust his will for my life. Yes. And I'm just grateful, amen, that he would see fit to, to have me walk into this place. Yes. See, a lot of people would say, well, testimonies are like the first two. They, they deal with things that you've overcome physically, but uh, there, there is something to be said when someone overcomes mentally and, yes. and, 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 and yes. professionally and emotionally those things that are yes. said. When people have told you you can't do it, yeah. look out. If you let God promote you, yeah. He will take you beyond what they said you cannot do. James 1, verses 2 through 4. James, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, the, the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect in entire wanting nothing. Uh, that your patience may be complete. And we say, well, I don't want to pray for patience. I don't want to ask God for patience. Did you know the only way to get patience in your life is to go through and endure something? And when you've been through a hardship and you've been through a trial, uh, yeah. patience comes. And when the next trial or event comes your way, you're able to sit back and take it a little easier, knowing that eventually the answer will come. Yeah. 
David said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Can I tell you that I've learned that even in those moments of weeping and not understanding what's in front of me, my joy is still inside there somewhere. It doesn't just drop out of the sky on me. It doesn't just come at random moments unseen and not knowing where it is. But I've learned to encourage myself in the Lord to, to testify to myself. There are times when I get down that I just start testifying. Come on. And I don't have to tell you my testimony. Sometimes I have to tell myself. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <sighs> I go back to October 15th, uh, 1988 at the Pine Grove Separate Baptist Church on a Saturday night around 9 o'clock when I knelt at the mourner's bench and I gave my heart to the Lord and I made Him my Savior at 13 years old. I go back to that moment uh, in uh, on, on Easter Sunday night in a revival service at the Parks Ridge Church of God when heaven came down on the back pew where I was sitting. They were shouting in the front and I was kneeling in the back with my head between my elbows trying to figure out what in the world was going on in sanctification in my life and the joy of the Lord bubbled over me. The shouting moved from the front to the back and they were dancing circles yeah. around the back section Come of on. the church where I was sitting because that's where heaven came down and met me that night. I remember the Sunday night when I grabbed hold of the altar and said, God, I'm not letting go till you fill me with this Holy Ghost. Yeah. If it's real at all, I want it. And I didn't get up from the altar. I got up from a place of laying in the floor with my legs like jello and I couldn't do anything but laugh for the next three hours as the joy of the Lord overtook me that I wasn't able to, to communicate even. Come on. Amen. Uh, I go back to the night when I was praying and I asked God to take the calling away from me. I didn't want it. I've been patting on the head every time I put a suit on my whole life and said, you look just like your great grandpa's. You're going to be a little preacher one of these days. I despised that and didn't want any part of it whatsoever. But it took a little prayer warrior in the church that came over and leaned in my ear on that Sunday night when I said, God, take this away from me. She leaned herself over in my ear and said, David, God gave you a dream last week. <laughs> and you've, and you've tried to be silly about it and ask him what did it mean but God said you already know what it means you need to get up from the altar quit asking him to take the calling away and do what he has called you to do and I got up that night and went to my pastor and said God has called me to preach at the age of 19 years old it was a couple of years later two or three years later that, that I was battling asthma problems so bad that I was carrying two inhalers in my pocket and I had left church on Sunday morning from an asthma attack and we drove all the way to Beattyville, Kentucky. There were places where cliffs were hanging over the, the street where we were going up in the mountains. Melissa and I were dating at that time and we got up to this little church and we talked with the pastor for a while. It was Brother Ken Turner and I shared some of that testimony that I had had to leave church that morning while I was preaching. And Brother Ken said, I knew there was a reason that God had me to ask you two months ago to come all the way up here on a Sunday night. I don't ask anybody to travel that far for one service, but God told me to have you come for one service and it was so that he could heal you tonight. And he laid hands on me. We about turned over the communion table together as God began to move in my life. I walked out of that church that night, threw both of those inhalers away and didn't have that problem for many years to come because God healed me of a complete, full-blown asthma. Amen. At the age of 23, I was <sighs> sent home from work having chest pains. I, I was... Went home and I, I, I just took some aspirin and laid on the, on the couch. Slept for a while. A few days later in stubbornness, instead of going to a doctor in the ER or anything like that, I went to a chiropractor. <laughs> Told him what had happened. He said, it sounds to me like, young man, that you had a heart attack. So we went a few years later and had some tests done. Now notice I said a few years. <clears throat> When I had other problems a few years later and they confirmed that indeed I had had a heart attack at some point in my past. They didn't know the date, but I knew when it happened. 
The doctor said you've got some damage done. Your heart's enlarged a little bit. You've got these issues going on. A few years ago, I went to another doctor, ran a new set of tests after being prayed for a few times, and the test didn't show anything about a previous heart attack. Amen. No enlargement of the heart. You're healthy, strong, you're just fat. <laughs> I said, I know it. Praise the Lord anyway. Amen. Amen. Bless you. The damage wasn't there they thought was there. Amen. 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 Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 16 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all that you can do, stand. Yeah. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness in your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ah, yes. hey, well, how much time I got I gotta hurry can I tell you there have been moments in life testify just a little bit longer there have been moments in life over the last almost 23 years of our marriage that we've nearly given up there have been times when we wondered if we were going to make it anymore. There were times when the enemy thought he had us down financially. Come on, Come on you heard me talk about that wish list that had ketchup and mustard and stuff on it. But we didn't have anything in our house. 50 cent boxes of, of spaghetti and 50 cent cans of, of spaghetti sauce. And we survived for weeks off of that until somebody would come through with a bag of groceries or, or give us a handshake that we could run and catch the sale items at the grocery store. It's all we could afford. And we struggled through it and we worried, waited and we wondered. We have been through so many things in our marriage together uh, just on the marriage side that you don't see. But can I tell you, we've also been through some things in the church that has nearly destroyed us more than once. We've seen some cruel people in the church, but we've seen some cruel people in leadership. We've seen some cruel things happen, some, uh, some, uh, some, some criticisms that were meant to destroy and take us down. But we've learned to endure through those things. Yeah. Why? Because you can't walk around with your feelings on your shoulders. Wow. You can't walk around understanding that, well, this person's mean to me and everybody is supposed to love me. Can I tell you, Jesus said if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Right. So I count it as a joy when I fall into those moments uh, that the enemy is sending accusers. The Bible says that the, the accuser of the brethren who accused day and night was cast out of heaven and onto this earth. So guess what? We've got accusers when the enemy begins to send them our way. We need to learn how to square our shoulders right. back and stand on the faith of God and yeah. understand that this life is for us to endure. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And Paul right there, that's a champion verse for many of us in the church. But if you read what's ahead of it, Paul is saying, I've had times in my life when I'm hungry. I've had times in my life when I'm full. I've had times when I've had food and I've had times when there's been none. Yeah. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Understanding that our strength and our joy doesn't come from the things of this life, but they come from a supernatural source that you and I have the ability to lock arms with God and know that regardless of what comes my way, regardless of what uh, happens in this life, regardless of what the enemy may throw at me, and he will pull everything he can to, to, to bring destruction Bye. to you, to defeat you to cause you to give up but my brothers and my sisters can I tell you this morning we are part of the family of God and when the enemy attacks you he attacks the family can I tell you we need to learn to stand for the family in the house of God and know that my prayer is not just self-centered but my prayer reaches to your house yeah, yeah. 
When you stand, I stand. When we stand together, the enemy cannot defeat us. Hmm. Hallelujah. When we learn to stand together, the enemy cannot defeat us. He cannot defeat us. Anybody ever play the game Red Robin? Or Red Rover? Red Rover. When you were a kid, yeah. I hated that game. <laughs> In any game, I was always the fat kid that was considered a weak link. So even in Red Rover, if they dared to come through me, I knew it was going to hurt. And I wasn't going to be able to hold the line. So I was like, go. <laughs> By the time they got there, I made it look good, so at least they thought it just got broke, but I let go. <laughs> Can I tell you, you've been dared by the enemy. You've been dared to see if you can break through his defense. Can I tell you that if we lock arms together, he don't stand a chance. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know, but I came to church this morning to encourage you. I had to be encouraged a little bit this week. Right? I needed some encouragement this week. I had to encourage myself in the Lord. I came to church Wednesday night. I texted Melissa Wednesday afternoon. I said, I don't even want to teach tonight. I just don't want to. Tired. I'm kind of feeling weak. I just don't want to. And she's, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you. <laughs> she didn't offer to teach for me. Nope. <laughs> nope. She did what a good wife does. She put me in my place. <laughs> I pray for you. <laughs> I came to church Wednesday night and we talked about Romans chapter 4. And we did some rabbit trails, but we got through the discussion of the chapter and I felt so good and uplifted when I left here. Because I had been, and I won't say it was just a conversation, but it was because I had been with my family. Yeah. So I came this morning excited to see you. I didn't know there were going to be so many of you. I didn't know we were going to have new faces this morning. And I meant to say it earlier, it's good to see all of you. Yes. It's good to see all of you. If it's your first time here, you're not a guest anymore. That's right. Amen. If it's your second time, you're already family. That's right. Amen. If it's beyond the second time and you just ain't been here a while, where you been? Yeah. <laughs> each other Amen. and be overcomers in this life. I want you to stand with me this morning. I want us to pray together and then at least one person has asked for special prayer today. So we're going to pray. Can we pray together. Father, we just praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the testimonies that have been shared this morning. We thank you, Father, for encouraging us, for lifting us up, for giving us the ability to see beyond the flaws and the faults of this world, to understand, God, that you are able and you are faithful to us, Father, if we'll stand up and be faithful to you. So, Father, we praise you. We thank you this morning, God, for encouraging us. And I pray for my church family today, my new friends, my old friends. God, that you would encourage them and bless them today to keep going. If they came this morning thinking about giving up, Father, encourage them to keep going a little farther. For you are faithful in our journey. Lord, we give you honor and glory in this place. If you need prayer this morning, would you come and stand along the front? We want to pray for you. 